This is Billionaire Mondays. Every Monday, we present you with another billionaire. Today, we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about JP Morgan. Welcome to ALUX.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello, Aluxers, and welcome back to our channel. It's so great to have you back with us for another video on billionaires. Today, we're pointing the spotlight on one of the most controversial and talked about moguls, JP Morgan. Yes, he's dead, but the legacy he left behind will stay in our culture forever. John Pierpont Morgan Sr., or JP Morgan as most people know him, was born April 17, 1837, in Hartford, Connecticut. His father was an American banker who dominated the corporate financial industry in the U.S. His entire career revolved around big business and key investments, like the formation of the United States Steel Corporation, International Harvester, and AT&T, or the merger of Edison General Electric and Thompson Houston Electric Company to form General Electric. He was filled with business ideas and made major investments that helped America develop to where it is today. Criticism seemed to follow him everywhere because he held different views on religion, civil responsibilities, and politics than those that were popular at the time he lived. He passed away March 31, 1913 in his sleep at the age of 75 while traveling in a hotel in Rome, but was brought back to his childhood home to be buried. He left his fortune to his son, J.P. Morgan Jr., but his legacy and companies he owned still carry his name. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. But let's dive in, shall we? Here are the 15 things you didn't know about J.P. Morgan. Number 1. He was an avid art collector. Most rich people choose to invest their money in expensive art pieces like paintings, limited edition books, sculptures, or belongings of famous dead people. Men collect vintage cars, musical instruments, or sports objects, and women typically collect jewelry, clothing, and handbags. These can have a lot of value over time because they're transmitted generation to generation. On the same note, JP Morgan was also an avid art collector. He was very enthusiastic about everything art-related. When he passed away, his collection was estimated to be at $50 million, and throughout his life, he was a benefactor for lots of museums, like the National History Museum, the Met, and there's even a library that carries his name, the Morgan Library and Museum. Number 2. He Hated Being Photographed Paparazzi have been taking pictures of famous people since cameras were invented. Of course, back then, affairs and nudes were a lot harder to catch on camera by paparazzi. But day-to-day -day photos to help document their life and have something to put in the newspapers were a thing even back when J.P. Morgan was a very sickly child and throughout his life suffered from rosacea, which is why he didn't like to be photographed. There are a few pictures taken by some sort of paparazzi where he looks very angry because he has his photo taken by surprise. Looks like body image and self-consciousness was even a thing back then. Number 3. He Invested in Tesla's Projects No, not Elon Musk Tesla. In case you didn't know by now, JP Morgan was one of America's biggest investors and bankers back in the day. He had lots of money to invest and was always looking around to do the next rising business that would allow him to make more money. Besides banking, art, steels, and railroads, he also invested in Nikola Tesla's groundbreaking projects. In 1900, J.P. Morgan invested in Tesla's idea that was meant to build a transatlantic wireless communication system that would outperform the short-range radio wave-based wireless telegraph system. He gave Tesla $150,000 to start with, the equivalent of $4,412,400 today, and in return, he asked for a 51% control of the patents. The project didn't make it because Tesla decided to change the terms and Morgan did not approve of them. Unfortunately, the project fizzled out before it even started. Number 4. He influenced the American economy during the Panic of 1893 and 1907. There are a lot of ways in which the private sector helped the government or treasury to recover or avoid massive crisis. Financial crises are cyclic, so they're bound to happen over and over. We just need to get better at predicting them. The Panic of 1893 was a serious economic depression in the United States that began that year and ended in 1897. The federal treasury was nearly out of gold and people were withdrawing their money like crazy. This is where Morgan stepped in. 
he bought a statue of gold and sold it to the Treasury. In 1907, most American banks were on the verge of bankruptcy, and again, Morgan decided to step in and help them to get out of the mess. He organized a team of bank and trust executives, which redirected money between banks, secured further international lines of credit, and bought up the plummeting stocks of healthy corporations. Unfortunately, he died a few years after and didn't live up to help the U.S. during the 1921 financial crisis. Number 5. When he died, his fortune was worth billions of dollars. Being such an influential person for that era, J.P. Morgan had quite some money to spend and leave behind. When he passed away, his eldest son inherited all of the fortune and made sure he didn't let it go to waste, because the huge corporation J.P. Morgan & Chase still exists today carrying his name. It's not easy to determine how much he left behind, but sources say that his fortune was estimated between $1.5 and $49 billion. A lot of time has passed since 1913, and inflation rates combined with the lack of accurate and reliable sources makes it hard to say a number. What we know for sure is that he was one of the richest Americans and probably one of the richest men in the world at that time. Number 6. J.P. Morgan & Chase Paid Over $1.5 Billion In Fines So Far J.P. Morgan & Chase is possibly the largest bank in the U.S. by all means. The giant corporation is now one of the leading companies in all financial sectors, both in the U.S. and worldwide. Having such a vast history and being the fruit of so many mergers, J.P. Morgan & Chase has been involved in a few scandals so far, just like any other bank. Whether it was about trading, sales of mortgage securities, or just breaking the law in any way, they were caught a few times with some serious evidence and paid the price, literally. So far, J.P. Morgan & Chase has paid fines of roughly $1.5 billion combined. But if you consider the fact the bank is actually worth around $3 trillion, $1.5 billion is like chump change. Number 7. He wanted to invest in the London Underground, but failed. J.P. Morgan had Europe very close to his heart. He did a lot of business there, too, and wanted to extend more and more to make the most out of the developing industries there. He wanted to invest in the London Underground, but Charles Tyson Yerkes thwarted Morgan's efforts to obtain parliamentary authority to build the Piccadilly, City, and Northeast London Railways. Although he was very successful in matters of business and crisis, from this defeat, he could not rise. It was outside of his influence and powers. Back then, most of the lines were controlled by Yerkes, and giving up the new lines to Morgan would have meant a massive competition for him. Even though he didn't do big business in London, Morgan owned a few houses there, and it also marked the beginning of his career, which is why he wanted to invest in the underground. Number 8. In 2014, an employee committed suicide by jumping from the J.P. Morgan & Chase headquarters. Going to work is that one thing that will follow you for the majority of your life. It takes more than eight hours of your day and around five to six days per week. It's the kind of commitment that will get you here, on our billionaires list, so no complaints. A lot of people get caught up in the whole work environment, stress too much, and often neglect themselves, leading to severe mental health issues. Hitting that burnout or even worse, committing suicide because you're so overwhelmed is one of the biggest problems employers face now. Apparently, J.P. Morgan & Chase is not the best place to work for either, since one of its employees committed suicide by jumping from one of their towers. Not all suicides that happen at the workplace are related to the job, but it's still bad PR for them. Number 9. His Madison Avenue House was the first electrically lit home in New York City. J.P. Morgan was one heck of a man. He worked until he died. He was an art collector, had built a massive business that would thrive in the years to come, and managed to save the economy a few times. He had his fair share of influence and roles in the industry. Besides investing in the most profitable industries back then, he was also one of the first to enjoy new technologies. His main residence was always in Manhattan, and his Madison Avenue home was one of the first houses to be lit up electrically in New York. His interest in the new technology was a result in his financing Thomas Alva Edison's Edison Electric Illuminating Company back in 1878. Number 10. J.P. Morgan Chase & Co. is the U.S.'s largest bank and second most valuable by market capitalization. Yes, J.P. Morgan & Chase is a huge corporation, and yes, they're worth a lot of money, $2.789 trillion to be exact. 
They also comprise the world's most systematically important multinational investment banks and their parent financial institutions. So if JP Morgan does something bad, the whole world suffers because of it. Unlike other banks, they do investment banking, asset management, private banking, private wealth management, and treasury and security services divisions. The bank is so large and interconnected that whatever happens, they will not fail or die. In fact, if something catastrophic were to happen to it, the government will support them. Basically, JP Morgan is an unbeatable force. This is how they do it in the banking industry. And Aluxers, if you want to find out some more about billionaires, make sure to watch our video 15 Things You Didn't Know About Walt Disney to find out some more about that billionaire's life. Number 11. He was supposed to be on board the Titanic in 1912, but he was forced to cancel. As we mentioned about him so many times already, JP Morgan was involved in all major businesses from the US and Europe. At one point later in his life, he got involved with the marines and shipping industry. He wanted to dominate the transatlantic shipping industry since he saw great potential for the future. He got so involved in the whole business that he landed a seat in the famous Titanic ship. Fortunately for him, he had to cancel his trip, and what a good decision that was since we all know how the Titanic went down. He later went on to say that, quote, monetary losses amount to nothing in life. It's just the loss of life that counts. It's that frightful death. Proving once again that money counts just as long as you stay alive to enjoy it. Number 12. His first wife died a year after their marriage. JP Morgan was not your usual rich guy. He was not a womanizer, a cheater, or a bad spender. His focus was on business, projects, his hobbies, and new technologies. As for his personal life, he only had two wives, and that's only because his first one died very shortly after they got married. In 1861, he married Amelia Sturgis, commonly known as Mimi, but she died the following year due to her advanced tuberculosis. After that incident, he only married once more, with Frances Louisa Tracy, known as Fanny, and she gave him four children. His children followed his footsteps and took over the company and philanthropy work. Like father, like children. Number 13. He created the first billion dollar corporation. After the death of his father, JP Morgan took over the business and took it to the next level. He invested in railroads and arranged the merger of Edison General Electric and Thompson Houston Company to form General Electric back in 1892. After the Panic of 1893, the firm with a new name and organization, now called J.P. Morgan & Co., soon became a major player in the steel industry by financing the formation of Federal Steel in 1898. Three years later, he bought Andrew Carnegie's steel company for nearly $500 million and merged the two entities into a new one called U.S. Steel, creating the first billion-dollar corporation. This is the level on which J.P. Morgan operated all his life. Number 14. He liked to take on troubled businesses and reorganize them. Some people have the God complex or deep mommy-daddy issues, and they feel the need to help others, give them unsolicited life or business advice, or simply step in to do the job. Having spent a lifetime creating businesses and investments, JP Morgan thrived on helping others with his experienced background. Sometimes he took it too far, but he always had the best intentions at heart. He's known for having had this great pleasure of taking in troubled businesses and reorganizing them so they work properly and make a profit. How about we call this one CEO Issues? Number 15. Rich Uncle Pennybags from Monopoly is said to be inspired by JP Morgan. Famous celebrities now get a wax figure when they reach a certain level of popularity. Other famous people, such as inventors, poets, or scientists, get statues, streets named after them, movies, biographies, and so on. JP Morgan kind of checked all boxes we mentioned above, and a few more. He's got a library and a museum named after him. He was mentioned in books, movies, and he might have even inspired one character from the Monopoly game. Rich Uncle Pennybags. He's depicted as the portly old man with a mustache who wears a morning suit and a top hat. In most parts of the world, he's known as the Monopoly Man or Mr. Monopoly and looks very similar to J.P. Morgan. And that's it for today, Aluxers. J.P. Morgan was an impressive character and surely changed the world. Thanks for sticking with us until the end, and please let us know in the comments below what business idea would you like to have J.P. Morgan's advice on? 
Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.